Hello, welcome to my tech farm. A few weeks ago, I tested lazy annealing. You know, annealing on the heated bed after the printing covered. And the method works, actually. All mechanical properties are improved, especially the thermal resistance. Up to 150 degrees Celsius, that's incredible, compared to 55 with the regular PLA. Now, the problem is that we have the deformation and shrinking warping of the objects. Others also confirmed in the comments that they are using this method, only they don't go up to 100 degrees Celsius on the heated bed, but up to 80 degrees Celsius, and they don't have so much warping. Okay, but nobody answered me my question, which I also asked in that video, and that's uh, if anybody is using the annealing in the boiling water. So it is time for me to test it. And um, in theory, the method should work, because uh, the thermal contact with the heated water is more equal from all sides. Now the problem is that uh, it is co in contact with the water, so it will absorb some moisture water and uh, I have to pay attention to this. So I will do this annealing and after this I have to dry the objects on open air, but I want to follow the drying process, so I will measure the weight before and during this drying process too. I'm printing the same objects like from previous annealing video, but this time on Industry S1. Only here I don't have that uh, test objects for the bridging because it is not necessary here. And I'm using the same filament, this is Amazon Basics PLA. First group of test objects is printed, this will be the reference material. Second group of objects is finished too, this will be annealed, but I will mark these ones which will not be annealed, just in case to avoid that the marking will come off in the water. Before annealing I want to measure the weight of these three objects, and later I want to measure the weight to follow the drying process, maybe every two hours or something like that. This is in grams. The water is almost boiling, 94 degrees Celsius, so I follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer, but I don't think it's necessary, because the temperature of the boiling water on atmospheric pressure will be 100 degrees Celsius, it will never be more. And I will insert the test objects now. And I set the timer to 60 minutes, and the density of the PLA is 1.25 kg per cubic meter. This means it is heavier than the water and it will sink. If you have some kind of infill hollow objects, in that case maybe you want to place some kind of grid so they will sink. Or you can just leave them floating on the top of the boiling water. Hmm, I think I made a mistake, I should place them one by one because they are stick to each other. And uh, I already can see that some of them deformed because they are soft. The gravity still works. Maybe a better method is to place them one by one in the cold water and then slowly start with the heating of the water. No, I will stop the heating now because I want to do it correctly. So uh, I will start with the boiling of these objects which I wanted to use as a reference material and I will reprint in the meantime uh, new objects for the reference. Okay, now they are inserted, because the critical moment is when you insert them, they will be soft few minutes. Okay, and now the heating. Timer to 45 minutes. Mm, I can still see very similar deformation even after one minute. So this one is for the creep test, and also for the bed, it already has some stomach. And it's soft actually, so I can press it down, but uh, I don't want to do it. This one also, okay, but um, I'll finish as it is now, and we will see at the end. This is now the stabilized state, and you can see it is not completely boiling water, it's near boiling, 96 degrees Celsius, but this is far enough for this annealing. I don't want these objects to jump too much around, and I don't want them to deform even more. And now after 45 minutes, it automatically turns off the water heating, and I will leave it to cool down, and then I will analyze the objects. I will just leave them 5 minutes here on the paper tower and I will measure the weight of those three objects. Let's analyze the objects quickly. This one for the impact test is deformed, but now in, interesting in this direction. On that heated bed it was in this direction, along the z-axis. This is for the bending test and it also has some kind of stomach, so it also bended already. Mm, and maybe let's talk about this one, this is for the shrinking test, and very similar deformation I can see, like with that heating on the heated bed. And uh, this one is for creep test, and I will measure the weight for that, it will be good, but I will not do the creep test, because this is too big deformation to measure it. 
other test objects are in quite good shape and I can see that the marking survived, so the unread version will have the markings on it. And now let's measure the weight of these three objects. I can see some increase in the weight, of course, because they absorb some water and uh, I will leave them to dry on open air and I will measure the weight every two hours and I will uh, repeat this until they go closer to that uh, dry weight. Interesting thing I noticed, after approximately three days they have very similar weights, but uh, they get to this stabilized state from opposite directions, the annealed version by drying and the reference by absorbing moisture from the air. I am reprinting few more objects because I want to try the 80 degrees Celsius annealing too. One more annealing and this time on 80 degrees Celsius because I got several suggestions. The water was completely cold, I inserted the objects and now very slowly I am heating up to 80 degrees Celsius, then the alarm will uh, start and then I will turn off the heating and leave it slowly to cool down. So that's it, this is with my third group of objects and I will compare these results too, but only with some several objects. Mostly I'm curious of the temperature resistance test. The temperature is 80 degrees Celsius and now I'm turning off the heating and I will let it slowly cool down. Let's analyze the object. Yes, uh, minimal warping on this object for the shrink test, very similar. Oh, very weak warping on this test object for the bending test. This one is in good shape for the temperature test. And this is definitely much better than the other one on 100 degrees Celsius because it didn't deform too much. And this one for the impact test and again very similar deformation like with the other one on the 100 degrees Celsius. Overall I'm not too happy with the 80 degrees Celsius annealing because uh, the object still deforms. Now this is a shrinking test, I already measured them, avoiding the elephant foot of course. And uh, similar results like with the annealing on the heated bed. In X and Y direction it shrinks and in Z direction it expands. And I measure both and I can see a little bit less shrinking on the 80 degrees Celsius annealing compared to the 100 degrees Celsius. But unfortunately this shrinking and expanding cannot be always compensated in the design because they also warp and deform. So you can see we lost this squareness with these two anneal objects. I will show you everything in the results part. Another tensor of pulling test with the horizontally printed object and it is interesting to notice that in horizontal direction the annealed version shrinks and this one printed vertically expands and we can see very big difference in the length now. And now the layer adhesion test with vertically printed objects and here also the smallest concession area is the same 4 by 4 millimeters. The break was correct on smaller cross section area. Interesting that I can see some gaps here between lines on this vertically printed object. And now the hook test where we have some tensile and the bending stress too and I can see this annealed version has some warping here but I hope it will not have significant effect on the strength. This was very similar break. And now the eyes of the impact test with this half kilogram hammer and I'm not really sure how comparable is again this uh, testing because uh, I can see a lot of warping on these annealed test objects and also they are short or at least uh, 3 or 4 millimeters. Anyway, I'll try to do the test and we will see the result. Peel it. Zero position. Annealed on 80 degrees Celsius. Hard to see version. For the first look, very brittle material in all three cases, but uh, let's analyze the footage. This is a zero position of the hammer and this is after breaking the PLA, 
the annealed version on 80 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius and basically there is no difference between these three objects. And if I measure everything from the zero position I can calculate the breaking energy. And now the temperature test in the oven and uh, I want to record the temperature of the first deformation and I believe the PLA will deform around 55 degrees Celsius and these two should start with the deforming above 100 degrees Celsius. The temperature I will follow with this cooking thermometer. This is a time-lapse video speed up uh, 25 times and as expected approximately at 52 degrees Celsius the regular PLA start with the deformation for the moment the auto safe turn off the light and then approximately above 150 degrees Celsius the other two started with deformation in the same time. And I can stop the experiment on 160 degrees Celsius approximately. Interesting the first look they are similar but of course this is very soft already. Others are soft too. I think this was the most important test in this uh, video and it is good to see that both annealing method works so the temperature resistance is significantly improved. And now three point bending test but I can see a lot of warping and deformation on these test objects. The distance between supports is 50 mm here you can see my equipment. And I will use these loads which I will place one by one and here you can see all loads placed uh, at the end of one test. And here they are side by side under 1.25 kg load, 2.5 kg load, 5 kg and under 10 kg. And after testing not sure but uh, I think very minimal deformation. Let's analyze the data in this Excel table which you can download from mactechfun.com website. And let's start with the drying. It was on open air on approximately 50% relative humidity. And uh, I was measuring the weight and approximately after third day I noticed that the weight stabilizes. But also I noticed uh, with the reference PLA that it absorbs moisture from the air so the weight increased. But again on the third day it stabilizes and they have the similar weights. So let's see the testing. The tensile pulling test, uh, basically the annealed version was a little bit stronger but very minimally. Now the layer adhesion test and this was the only test where the reference material was stronger. I believe that because of that minimal warping the load was not really perpendicular to the layers and we have some bending stress here too. Probably that's the reason for the weaker layer adhesion but this was very strong too. The hook test very minimal difference here we can see. And then the bending test. Now on this graph we can see only the deformation after 30 seconds on these given loads. But this is more interesting and important. Uh, the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds for these loads. And here we can see that the annealed version was uh, stronger compared to the reference PLA. The two versions uh, was very similar. Uh, the only difference we can see on uh, under the 10 kg load, a uh, little bit more deformation we can see on uh, 80 degrees Celsius in the object. The impact strength, uh, interesting that uh, here all three cases was very similar, so basically no difference in this case. And then the most important, the temperature test and uh, both annealed versions perform great. So the uh, temperature of deformation was uh, above 150 degrees Celsius. And don't forget the deformation. So this was measured deformation shrinking in X and Y direction and uh, expanding in Z direction. So this is the 100%. But unfortunately, this cannot be always compensated, let's say in the slicer because the deformation is not always equal and it will shrink and warp in different directions. Now the conclusions. Well, if the only goal is improving the thermal resistance, in that case the method works. About other mechanical properties, well, some of them are improved a little bit, some of them stay unchanged, but still we have the problem with that uh, warping and deformation. And actually it was bigger compared to the lazy annealing, you know, on the heated bed. Probably because that bed holds that position and after the bed adhesion is bigger, stronger than the warping, until that uh, the object will stay in the same position. Now I have suggestion to the manufacturers too. 
it would be great if they could improve some kind of PLA which can be annealed without deformation. I have some experience with the polycarbonate uh, plus cement PC blend. I tested the regular and carbon fiber version and the carbon fiber version can be annealed without any deformation, very minimally. So maybe adding a carbon fibers to the PLA can improve these properties so they can be annealed without deformation, maybe. Uh, so far only one uh, carbon fiber PLA I tested by Sanlu, but uh, that was very weak compared to the regular PLA, other mechanical properties, so I wouldn't bother with annealing that object. I also have uh, here for the testing a glass fiber PLA by Philaticum. The test will be done in maybe two weeks. Maybe that can help with the uh, annealing without deformation, we will see. If you have some other experience, then you know, write me through lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing!